Fortnite fans, this is Bigfoot Explorer. Patrick finally showed up. I apologize. It's been a long day. Yeah, it's been a long day. Mine started at 7 o'clock. Got everything done last night. Y'all might have saw a picture on the Bigfoot Explorer uh, group page. Packed it up. Drove all day. Stopped. Stopped and ate some boudin. I had some boudin, which was awesome. That was right near Crot Springs before we get to Alpalusas. Uh, so we're here at the campground. We are roughing it. And if y'all can hear that thunder in the background, it's thundering. We're intense. Now, tell us about your day. I woke up at 3.45 a.m. after <laughs> getting two hours of sleep in anticipation of uh, what's going to go down this weekend and uh, worked all day and got off work and <coughs> just running and gunning trying to get up here. Got up here right at dark and all of a sudden the lightning starts in. But now the fun starts. So we're going to call it fun. <laughs> so we got some lights and stuff hooked, hooked up. We got my pack. We got the audio. We got some camera. I don't know if we're going to run uh, infrared stuff here tonight we may just try to use some flashlights uh, but tell them a little bit about what we're doing tonight tonight we're going to a place about our way southern part of this parish and uh, we're going to do a night knock investigation in the area it's 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 really visited by a lot of people uh, it's 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 like I told Scott they are in areas that you have no idea they're there. And so we're going to go try to pull one up with single knot theory and use advanced single knot theory to come in hard and uh, see what we can see what we can capture. Now, uh, so we can get we... there, turn lights on. Uh, those in this area are very comfortable people. Yeah. They're very comfortable people. And uh, we can get there, explain what we're doing, go lights out, start knocking. All the camera's going to see is black when we're knocking, but if something comes up, if it comes up close enough to wood line, I'm going to try to hit the spotlight so we can get it uh, This is the, yeah. you can't really see it. We'll show this again tomorrow, but this is the, uh, this is the Bigfoot investigator's tool bag. Uh, this was orange. I spray painted it. <laughs> it's crude, but it works. Uh, uh, here we have your, uh, shotgun mic. Um, and that's fed into a, a, a Zoom H4N audio recorder, a professional audio recorder. Got all the levels set up for this type of deal. Um, and this pole right here is for the daytime where we put a GoPro on top and we aim it backwards. So uh, other experiments that we're going to be doing throughout the day um, I'm going to have this facing backwards and Patrick's going to help me and press the record button because I can't reach it back there and we're going to go and I know I'll have a camera in my hands forward we'll be documenting some of the experiments and the tracking and things that we're going to do but then we're also trying to I mean if anything's ha if anything happens audible this is going to catch it because this can run for almost 20 hours straight so I'll leave this going every time we're in the woods. Um, and then of course, uh, the GoPro, that can't run all day long. I only have four batteries, but we actually are in a site where we got electric and we got a ton of uh, uh, extension cord and we're gonna be, we're part of uh, you know the work at at night after these experiments is to come back and put all this stuff on charge. So it's not easy uh, to be geared up and ready to go. Um, but Patrick's done his part for years and uh, I want to make sure that I'm going to do my part too so that we can hopefully bring something to either film or audio. So we got a good three days. Mm -hmm. It's Labor Day weekend. I lucked out. You know, my kids are uh, having a good time, and uh, we're looking forward to it. 
uh, I brought to the party the deluxe model hand forward. Let's see the deluxe model. Is that the Bassomatic? <laughs> yeah, this is this is my, this is what I carry when I'm tracking. This is my top of the line. Uh, is that this, a machete? No, that's a hand forward knife. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I carry. Hey, we we are gonna show this for tomorrow, but this you you did this? It has an M on it. Yeah, it's a uh, me. But that's what I carry. It cost me two dollars and sixty nine cents to make. I carry it, uh, carrying it, teaching uh, my printing skills, knife only skills, and also you, it doubles as a weapon when I'm tracking. So did you make this from a lawnmower blade? That's a that's a file. It's an actual file. You okay. can see the the check mark. You see the hammer mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a pattern after seventeenth century knife. This is all brain tan, wood skin. I love this. We're definitely going to show this for tomorrow. Yeah. Patrick made all this. That's a horse hair from my horse up there. Nice. But yeah, that's what I, that's all I've been carrying as far as you know equipment goes. Uh, hey, I like it. Um, so. Enough of the yapping. We're gonna get some of the lights and stuff ready. We're gonna pack up. He's itching to go. And and look, <laughs> y'all don't know where we're at. And part of this has to has to remain anonymous, okay? Um, and I think y'all understand why. Sasha, Sam, his studies here since 2009 until now. You know, this place needs to remain that way because people are crazy. Right, but he, huh? Um, we're in the southern end of the area where he tra he he tracks them, Sasha and Sam. They're literally, I don't even think they're three quarters of a mile, huh? They're about three miles. About three miles away from where we are right here. So. <laughs> There's only five people in this camp site. Um, it's pretty barren, which is nice. But so, I know this is what it takes. So we're here and uh, we're, lo we're looking forward to this weekend and getting through the night, really. So it's possible we could corroborate the single knock theory tonight. Did you bring the pork chops? Hang around no, I didn't bring any pork chops. I got a couple <laughs> burritos. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back once we get at site location and just give y'all a brief uh, hello, we're here, and all that good stuff. And then if something happens, we'll see. All right, guys, um, we are at site location now. Um, As you can see, I got the audio recorder on, and here, here's Patrico. We are going to do a single knock theory here tonight and try to get a response. So what we're doing is we're going to go dark, and basically I'm going to get ready with the camera. If something comes in, he's going to shine the light, I'll hit record, but basically what we came here to get is for Patrick to knock. You'll hear him knock first. And then um, if we do get something to knock back, we're hoping that this audio recorder and that shotgun mic and the mic that's on top of the camera will pick that up and we will explain that once we're at, uh, available to do the edit. Okay guys, so we'll we'll be back with maybe a wrap up. Well, no matter what, we'll have a wrap up for what happened here tonight, okay? All right, we're going dark.
so we didn't have any luck here. We are gonna go up the road a little bit and uh, try something different. Try it up that way. Over there. So, uh, we, we did not have an accurate, uh, night here. Um, we, we faintly heard something, but nothing to corroborate the single knock theory yet. Um, the insects were out, there were a lot of deer out, uh, just didn't happen right here tonight so we have uh, two more nights and two more days of things to come so uh, hang with us and we will be back all right YouTube it is uh, Saturday we're getting a late start we uh, didn't sleep too good in the tents you know we did the best we could it was fine but uh, Fixing to go hit the uh, heat in the woods. What's uh, what's on the menu today, this morning? Tracking. We're going to track. So uh, the, the spot that we're going is, is that's a known spot where you find those tracks from Sasha and Sam, right? We're tracking in where we had where I had the first encounter. The first encounter uh, is where we're actually going in the woods to track. So. Uh, uh, this is where I was finding tracks back in J July there. So we're going, we're going to track area one and area two. Okay. So we're fixing to get into it, fans. Got to hydrate. There you go. All right, you see the equipment we got. I'll be wearing my pack again. fixing to go tracking I got the camera in my hands I got the audio going I need to put my phone on mute Turkeys in here. It's so dry. What we're really gonna be looking for wet seeps is low tracks made during the last rainstorm. And if we when we get down the creek bottom, maybe tracks in that. Hey, here we go. Heel. That's a heel. That's a big toe. It's inconclusive because I can't find five toes. I can find one, two, three, and a heel. I see, I see that, but yeah, we don't know if that's a boot or... It's not a boot, it's just inconclusive. Okay. It's just an inconclusive track to me. It's, uh, it, it most likely is. Just because I've been tracking this set yeah. for so many years, that's gonna be little Sam. But that's probably uh, a week old, uh, five to seven days. The track there, impression. 
Well, I can definitely see how people do not see what you see. I mean, it takes a it takes a real skill set to try to walk right over. As hard as the ground is, you're going to pick them up intermittently, but mostly you'll find it in impressions in the leaf litter as dry and hard as the ground is right now. Or if you find a sandy area, you might find an old track where it rained, where it was softer when they stepped. first time in the second trail that I've seen trees broke over the trail. That was broke over here and it's fresh in July. I sent you a picture of in July. This is, there was green leaves on it in July. But that one right there? Yeah, right there. Yeah. That's yeah. the first time, this is the first year I've ever seen tree breaks and pushed over, over, trails. over trails. Now granted he got shot at so I don't blame him. <laughs> That's a left foot. So is this what you're seeing right here? This right here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of like these toes right here. See? So these toes. This is this is gonna be a oh, left foot. See. So the toes. And it's gonna come back to here. That's gonna be Sam. Well, I can definitely see where the weight bit into that piece of dirt. Yep. Yeah. Man, it's like a needle in a haystack trying to find them. Boy, it's about uh, the uh, perceptional blindness. Yeah. And a lot of times I get out here, I take a big deep breath, I turn everything off, I listen to the hum of the woods, the right. hum of the silence. And I just look at all the disturbances. You can see what the water disturbed. You can see what's naturally rotted. You can see the pine cones where the water washed up against it. The disturbance uh, against an old brush top that was there. You see uh, the leaf litter. You see where the water pulled up here. Yeah. Pulled on and off. <coughs> you know, all every disturbance. And I just walk through until I find the disturbance I'm looking for. We're finding inconclusive punch marks, and where well, it's a punch mark, explain. All right, punch marks is where the the ground litter the, the ground litter is compressed in the shape of a track, but there's no tracks in the dirt because the dirt's so hard. Now, the same set of toes I just found in the leaf litter, which is inconclusive there. You can see the toes right here. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five toes. I don't necessarily see a heel, so I call it inconclusive. But that is, that is an impression, that is a track. It's an inconclusive track to me without a pristine, but your inconclusive tracks will, you know, or 95% of all the tracks you'll find will be punch marks or inconclusive tracks because it's missing a piece of the track. And with such a, uh, a fringe science that you're chasing down you want the pristine track and that's you know one in 50 or one in 60 tracks you find will actually be pristine it means it's it's completely encompassed track all toes and heel and it, yeah that's it's an what island I, of the foot yeah that's what i'm looking for even though but think about how you walk you don't leave a perfect track every step you make either right but that is definitely a track There's no, there's no deer sign on it. So why is it a trail? Exactly. It's beat down to the dirt. See, and this is running this drainage, guys. You can see how deep this little drainage is that's coming out of these smaller hills. Most of the interior you get swampy, but out on the this outskirts we have a nice little nice little drainage and this trail is is parallel in this uh, drainage so 
soon. Yeah, this trail is beat down the dirt, and the only track I find on it has has five toes. Even though it's an inconclusive inconclusive and doesn't have a heel, it's still the only track I find on this trail. And I've been tracking this trail for several years. I know what's back here. I try not to project it without conclusive tracks. Right. But that's why we're here looking. All right, so we're walking along, and of course, uh, finding structures in the woods are odd. But here's something extremely odd. This is, I mean, leaf litter all around us. Leaf litter everywhere. And there's nothing like this right here. Just fresh dirt that's in a pile. There's no hole around it where it was dug out of it. There's no hole. But it's piled right here. So get these finger impressions. See Patrick says he's got some finger impressions. See these two finger impressions? Like this. It's almost like uh, they made a mud pie and was playing. You know, I mean, it, I've never seen anything like this. I've been in these woods for 28 years, and I've never seen anything like it, nor has there anything been like it here. I'm at a loss of what it is. I'm not saying this is what they did. I'm saying that this is an anomaly, anomaly that has what appears to be finger impressions in it. You know, so you're going to have to look at that on video and make your own determination right but this has never existed here it wasn't here in july when i was just here in july tracking and so i'm you know i'm finding inconclusive five toe tracks on a trail that's beat down to the dirt they have no hoof hoof tracks on it from any other animals and then we come across this giant mud pie with finger with what appears to be finger in it and it took time to build that up i mean it had the city a while yeah it had to come from out of here somewhere. And here's a drainage here. Right there. Is that something scooped out of the bank? See what you see right there in the bank? Where it's missing dirt? Maybe. Yeah, I'm looking for a source of the dirt. Yeah. Yeah, that's fresh dirt right over there. This is new to me. I have never seen one of these before. I don't know. It seems if it was, it, it it doesn't seem like... I mean, where would the dirt come from? Where did it come from? What if they used the, that hole itself? What hole? The hole that's under underneath that and just stacked it all around it. it just upturned the soil. Oh, just just to turn the soil mm -hmm. could be, could be. But whether they sat down were looking for grubs and were picking through and just started making piles and it just piled up on itself the whole. Yeah, because I had no. Well, you can see where odd. you can see where something was stuck in here. Yeah, and you can see this right here. Mm. That's, that's not a track. You see, of any kind. What, what gets me too is all this right here is somewhat have a layer of crust, but right here, this the top of the crust is. Yeah. But see, I'm not seeing any armadillo tracks. No. Nope. I'm nope. not seeing any squirrel tracks. Well, what's this right here? I don't know what that is. Well, I'm not seeing. Usually, if it's an armadillo, the snout marks. There's a definite uh, snood type thing. It looks like little claws. Well, something could have stepped in, I guess. Well, that and who knows what else has come along now. But this wasn't here in July. And that's a lot oh, of dirt. What's odd is why do it right underneath here? Wouldn't you do it in an area where it's clear? I mean, you do it right where this vine is. Yeah, I don't know. 
And the best part is this is not a deposit of downhill soil. Uh, Here. So. More toes. Washed out, inconclusive. One, two, three, four. Oh, I kind of see it though. Two toes. That's the best one I've seen so far. There's the heel coming back this way. That's the best one I've seen so far. Wow. Toes right there. I think what owned that track Heel. made that mud pie over. Hey, here's another set right here. Toes. That's what I was talking about when you're tracking. See, this is an armadillo. You see yeah, that? That's armadillo. Yeah. But when, when you're tracking. This is armadillo fans. You see that? How they root down in that hole and pick up a little bit. And the dirt is usually behind where they're traveling. Yeah. So where is that other toe spot? Now when you're tracking, when you're tracking, you want to you want to find a direction of travel. See how little that is? Mm -hmm. That's a little one. You, you can see more toes there of a bigger one. I'm wondering if there isn't another if there isn't if Sam, little Sam doesn't have a sibling. But when, whenever you're tracking, you don't. If one track is inconclusive, you find a series of tracks in the direction of travel, and uh, you know, so you establish direction of travel. You you establish. You might not find every track, but you'll find every third to fifth track should on a direction of travel, and that'll tell you that this is a trail, that what walked it was real, and who's going to be back here barefooted, you know, and and not and. Your inconclusive tracks are going to lead you to conclusive tracks. Right. If you just keep pushing. Okay. All right. So we found this massive. This is a white oak, or what some people might call. I don't know if it's a white. went down something just something just took off I heard it it was right on, on the other side of that hill it ran it ran in that opening right there and went right back up that hill there well I heard that I heard the initial and then that's all I heard and I saw it, you. It, yeah that was the last part it heard it said Shh, yeah and then it said Shh, ch, 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 ch. and so and it stopped on top of the hill it didn't run off it didn't run off it's Six, 60 yards up that hill watching whatever it is. I'm not saying what it is, it's just whatever it is, it's 60 yards up hill yeah. watching. So what we're looking at is this well beat down trail with no deer tracks on it, but it's clearly a trail. It reminds me of a cattle trail. Okay, if you're familiar hunting on people's land, you see these very narrow cattle trails where they've worn stuff up. Of course, you can see the hoofs of the of the cows, but here there's nothing. But the water is so far back. We're thinking water is a bit scarce that perhaps they may use this to traverse this uh, side of this embankment going down to get water. What 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 do you find? I find part of the track. Right here is side step down here. This is going to be a right foot track. It looked like the next one is going that way while it's hugging a tree. So he could have held on to that tree as it went down yeah. side stepping. It's just stepped here. Bam. It looks like it hugged this tree. Next foot went that way and slid. Again, see where that log is, comes to be and it's broke right there. Yeah, but that all all that mud down in there, once it put its weight down there, you, I mean, there should be something in... If it got down in the mud. Would you get down in the mud being as hairy as they are? Yeah, but where is he going? He's not side-skirting anything. There's a pool right there. Huh? There's a pool of water right there he's reaching. It looks like he's reaching down to. That or they jumped out onto that the over peninsula. There? Yeah. They could be jumping over there. It's a perfect point. 
But there's definitely a clear See, impression. It comes to a point. There's a clear impression with a big toe right here, which if you remember Sasha, when her big toe hits the ground, the other four don't. She has an injury to her foot. So, mm. you saw how they narrowed down they use a trail that was actually one of my old trails I hunted on that they took over but you can see the the, the trail beat down to the dirt yeah uh flat-footed animals no hoof prints no nothing going using up and down the trail it peters out and when they get to another area say this other bottom the trail widens out and they just kind of meander through Mixing. gathering gathering and doing what they do right and uh this is down there a ways is where I where I stopped and I doubled back to this next ridge line ridge line and busted Sam on my back trail. But they don't cross the creek. They stay on this side of the creek. They go all the way back to the to probably another mile back there to the swamp area. Yeah. But this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. All in this leaf litter. There is a well-worn out path and there are no deer tracks in it, no raccoon, small rodents, it's weird, it's like a, it's like a cattle, cattle trail, I mean you can see it, it's perfectly sitting in a place where you could easily jump down and get hidden and use those shoots of these drainages to get away but it's skirting and using this bridge and patting it down just like he said flat flattening this out perfectly it's like a mountain goat making a trail on the side of a mountain that's what it reminds me of so that's what i was talking about when we're out What's here now? all right we were checking out that downed white oak. Something was on the side of the hill and it took off. Me, I'm not the one jumping to conclusions. You know, I'm not one of those guys. Oh, it's this. Well, it ran up on top of this hill and been sitting there watching us the whole time, real quiet like. And we started coming back up this back trail. And come up through here. And we get right here. It came from where it was standing at on top of the hill and it came right over here and I told Scott we're being shadowed and we are and then we just heard it while we're getting the camera ready to, 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 to I told uh, Scott just to, to pan through there zoom out and see if we can pull out a face out of there because we're being we're being scouted and we said that we heard him hit something right over here yeah and uh he was anticipating We can sit here. Right? No, let's, well, let's go to spot two. We need okay. to maximize trying to get some metal. Well, we, we got shadowed. He come across that hillside, that ridge line right there. And we're, we're moving, so I'm going to keep the camera going. And see if we hear something out. As we're going out. I mean, one bird I hear. So far, you hear the mosquitoes. That's 
try this. Whoop! Whoop! He wouldn't respond. knocking but he's walking around back there. About 40 yards back that side there's something walking around. He didn't move until I knocked the second time. When I knocked the second time he, took, he started walking a bit. And he didn't go to the road? He crossed it. I was looking where he crossed, where he jumped across. I wanted to find a conclusive track where he jumped this road or whatever he was shouting us on that hillside jumped the road. Yeah. And it's just so hot and dry. Yeah, the ground's hard. hard. So I thought about doing a knock. I did a second knock and right back there 40 yards there was walking. It, it walked, it, he walked about 15 yards and stopped. So it's almost as if he's anticipating us going down this way. If this is what I think it is. Yeah. Just pan it real good so we can maybe go through the shots and look and see if we pick, get a face peeking out at us. This is the way it is up here. They'll stop. They'll stop right beside you. They do this to a lot of people, but a lot of people don't notice it. Oh! What you found? Oh no. man, look at that! I s oh, man, I can see that. Show, show, show it to him again. So that's this a is, left foot, right? Yeah, this is a left foot leaf litter impression from the heel back here coming forward to a big toe and all the subsequent toes and coming back down to the heel. I see it. I tell you what, people, there's nobody who's in this stuff there for me. Just, there's nobody in here barefooted. I just heard it sound like uh, he hit some brush back there. And it, it's okay to be doing this when you're when I'm out squat hunting, and I'm Patrick the Tracker, and I'm doing this, and I'm getting paralleled. It's not a big deal. I do not enjoy it when I'm hunting or fishing. So I got to turn this side of me off, even though I'll notice something. I do my best to keep it from not invading my little box of privacy where I'm trying to enjoy myself. Right. Makes sense. So if he would want to step out right now, I wish he would. Right. I'm in the right mind to take it. Right. Your your squatch uh, squatch antenna is on. Yeah. It's hot, people. The struggle's real for something wet. Yeah, so it's like you're still your body core is still hot, but you're in the uh, you're in the truck in the AC, and now your your sopping wet shirt is ice cold. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can get hot or you cold. Damn Sasquatch, they don't care. We're <laughs> we're we're lightweights.
<laughs> no competition. Well, as you can see, I'm surrounded by pig wallows, and they're never very far from game. This is tracking area two. This is where I, I find them consistently cross, crossing the creek uh, in the same place, in the same manner. And they don't get very far from, from game. You can hear how dead the woods are compared to last night's knock. When they're in the area, the woods are dead. You know, there's not much going on. So we're going to do some tracking in here and see what we turn up. People, if you've read any article about Louisiana, Texas, and their rampant feral hog epidemic, uh, you're seeing proof of it here. I mean, it's uh, it almost looks like I don't know, a backhoe has been in here, but it's not. I mean, you can definitely see where they've rooted this entire trail. This would be a trail, but they've rooted it perfectly. And snout, depressions, and it's a seep in here, is what I call a seep. It's a low drainage area in a generally flat area coming down from the hills. So this is a natural wet spot that they have. It's just unbelievable. It's like it's like it's been disked up, ready for planting. That's what I like tracking in here. The hoes do all the work for you. Yeah. Which makes good for places that have been dry and hardened. Anything that's been walking in here, you can see. This is their creek crossing, where they cross that. This will be the third time I've been on this creek crossing. I come in and tracking, and you see a track going up this way. You can see right there where the moss is disturbed, where a knee was used, and getting up, going that way. Now you can also see, now normally, this is the first time I've seen this, normally all the tracks are headed in that direction. This is the first time I see a track coming back this way. And if you see right there, there's a hill. Yeah, I see down. that. I see, you see the you toes? Well, see you, how large that track is? The track goes all the way down in the water. The track goes all the way down in the water. And that is going to be a left foot track. That's the heel right that's, there. That's the heel. The heel's uphill. Yes. The toes are down here into the water. And that's a, that's a left foot track coming down into the water yeah the other one is a hill going into the water toes up going that way and this is the other one right there going up that side yeah you can also see looks what like what a little one did a sidestep getting up right next to it i mean that's oh you see that track right there under the roots going that way Right there. This is this is where they're crossing the creek at, uh, and they they continue to cross here. I was here in January. I was here in July, and now this is uh, almost September, or is September, August thirty first, I think. Yeah. It's the third time in here. That's the first time I've seen a track coming down. Coming this way. Coming this way. Yeah. Now they they get their trail. Is right over here, and I believe they use this tree to grab a hope to, you know, when they're crossing. This is here. I mean, this is 
they come right here. You can see where they're twisting the bark off this tree right here. See where they're twisting the bark off of the palm? Yeah, it's and yeah. grabbing. And they're coming right here. The rest of it's full of moss. Let's Guys. see. There's a heel track right there in the mud. In this part right here. Is under the water. Kind of lighter than the other. I don't know if you can get it under the water right there. There's a heel track right there. See a half moon shape? Facing that way, that heel, that heel going that way. Yeah, I can't get it. The trail could come down is right there. But it's so easy with hogs. I don't. Normally, I find a few tracks in here before they get here, but the hogs are eating us up. I know that's my favorite word, YouTube. Unbelievable! It's unbelievable. Huh? Well, the tracks of everything you see here, this is why they're in here. Yeah. This is this is their dinner. Pork. Now say something clever for the Bigfoot Explorer subs. You have to be a bit off your rocker to be doing what we're doing right now in the last Weekend of August. Thank you, fans. <laughs> <laughs> and that was from uh, Bigfoot Explorer Scott, the fearless leader, as in front of me, I tracking. Say, I wouldn't say fearless. Having fun in the woods, yeah. tracking. Having fun, tracking, looking for tracks. And, uh, Tonight, I'm looking forward to tonight. It's going to be interesting up in Arkansas. This was okay. Here. We were we were somewhat just meandering on our way back out, and uh, we noticed. Remember, guys, we saw that, uh, that mound of dirt, and we didn't know where the dirt came from. Look how odd this is. Hey, that's fresh activity on his track on his trail all of this right here we got to get across there that's fresh activity on his trail and then this mud again what just unearths that mud and leaves it upturned with no hole and then like patrick said we have some you know if this thing fills up with water these sticks aren't aren't going to be straight up and yeah. down i mean that could be anything i get that it's, it's been look how it's been stepping on that yeah. Stepping on that log. Something. Look at this the bigger log. That log right there. Look how it's generally buffed brown. But right here, it's all full of the red dirt where they step on it. Something steps on it. I mean, it could be pigs it could there be, too. It could be a hog walla. It could be. If they hog wallowed enough. But here's my thing. That's his. That's Sam's trail. I was set up over here, and this is the trail he was supposed to come down. And I was going to get video when he got shot at. This is where he whooped and whistled at me when I was hunting, just right over there. Yeah. So I really want to get across there and look. I mean, what what put that dirt there? Mm -hmm. Are you coming? Oh yeah, you gonna video me, Buster? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. I'm gonna leave the shed here. That's the uh, that's the benefit of the video guy. He gets to film the people bust their ass. I'm getting old, Scott. I'm getting old. You and me both. It's in the name of science. Well, I'm looking at track for looking for tracks as I go. Okay. Is. No. Oh, you smell something right there? It stinks. Well, yeah, if they stink. It stinks right there. Yeah. Is it pig?
Yeah, it's like a damn. There's an excavated hole up here. So there is a hole. Yeah. On that one. Yeah. There's an excavated hole up there. That's where the dirt come from. All right. Uh, we want y'all to check this out. I don't show as much as you want. We want y'all to check this out. <laughs> Somebody cut the rattle off. That's just your typical leg camera here. We, we get them all the time. We can we get them all the time. That's a leg hammer. A leg hammer, fans. Yep. That is a leg hammer. There's my boot. I'm a 10 and a half, 11. <laughs> Too bad they let him lay there. He could you fry him up or good. Yeah. Me and my friend Patrick were in a primitive tracking camp about three years ago and I noticed uh, or he showed me this track and I said gosh are you into that and he wouldn't tell me for a while but uh we started doing it about three years ago doing what uh, squatch hunting squatch hunting there you go and we went out and found many, many tracks. And last Christmas, I was coming home from uh, in Texas from a friend's house. And I, think. And, uh, I was coming uh, coming on uh, 49, Texas 49, and looked over to the. I was driving along, I was a few miles from the Louisiana state line, and there he was, right in the trees. Nighttime? No, no, about dust dark. Gosh. <laughs> I did the wrong thing. I squealed on my brakes, turned around, yeah. and he was gone. So you saw it, though. I saw one. You could see the whole body? I could see the whole body. He was standing right next to the highway. Almost as if he wanted to cross, or? Right. <laughs> God, that is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, my, I, I like to have a heart attack. I bet, I bet. <laughs> now, now, Patrick tells me of a story, an incredible story to me, about himself a girl who was doing some audio work and yourself up on the Arkansas line uh-huh what happened with that well we were up there and I didn't have my hearing aids on and I'm partially deaf and uh we got up there on the Arkansas line and it was it was dark and pulled up beside this little creek. What was the name of that creek? Well, we can't really talk about it. We're being anonymous about the location. Okay. All right. Just a little creek up in Arkansas. And uh, got out there, and we heard this splashing in the water. And they were hearing him, but I didn't hear him. Yeah. And I just about walked up on him. And they were hollering, get back in the truck, get back in the truck. <laughs> and I think he was at, at the, were we in my truck or your truck? Your truck. Yeah. And they said he was uh, banging on the tailgate. <laughs> oh, man. But there was a, the, the second time we went out, we were, we were up here, you know, and uh, he got to calling, calling them up, and I couldn't hear them then, 
you know, my my Walker game here is play, played out. <laughs> 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 and, and, but we looked over there, I said, shadow over there. And he, we, we turned down the <laughs> flashlight and Patrick said, Gosh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. And we went out there right where he was, and there was a there was a track there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Took a picture of three tracks. Yep. Mm. Now, now, did you walk in into the brush? What we did after after that, we turned on the flashlight and went in there and. He said, they're gone, but said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life, walking up to, to where he was, yeah. where the shadow was. I think he's talking about Arkansas. That wasn't a shadow, huh? I think he's talking about Arkansas, walking into the brush up to him. Remember when you we were knocking, you went through the brush at him? Yeah. <laughs> it was Arkansas. How Arkansas. close were you to him in there? Well, we were very close to him when I saw that shadow. The ones in Arkansas? Yeah. Yeah, those two? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but now I've got my cheaters on. <laughs> so you can hear now? Yes, sir. <laughs> so you're going to ride with us tonight? This is going to be a very interesting night. <laughs> uh, well, I got the cameras. I got some audio gear. Hold on. Well, I got one question. Have you ever seen single knock work? Yes. His single knock theory, you've seen that happen? Yes, sir. Sweet. Well, we're... We're hoping to document that. Okay. Tonight, because we've heard about it. You are a witness to it now. Yes, sir. And tonight, possibly, I'd like to be able to get at least on audio, have Patrick do his knock and have them respond back. And then if it goes further, you know, Perhaps he'll knock again, and it'll get, and it, it and it'll knock again. If we if we could get one really clear response back, that 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 camera and that audio equipment can pick up, that right there will will really solidify <laughs> for me and many other people on YouTube that the single knock theory at least is something that works here in the south yes sir at least at least in louisiana arkansas texas, texas. i know possibly alabama uh, um it's hard to recall every little detail through the years it's tough you know especially as i get older you know i'll think about something oh yeah this minor little detail comes up you know but uh you try to tell everything as accurate as you can. Right. And of course, you know, as you do so, you just do the best you can and that's that. You know, it's kind of like when you apply yourself. You know, what I was trying to discuss before, all right, you have two encounters. Well, how do you approach it? There's no book on how to approach anything about this. Right. And so you just, you know, it's like, it's like I've been crawling through the dark on my hands and knees grasping at something. Right, but the one good thing that you kept, yeah. though, was the safety issue, and that started you off, Yeah, I think. Yeah. But I've been groping in the dark on this and uncovering things, and as I uncover things, uh, I, uh, you know, to use deductive reasoning and observations and, and start building a base platform of behaviors and use that against them. Everything they ever did against me, I use against them, yeah. and I've been very successful uh, in that. So, uh, I'm really, you know, this is the first time I've had technology follow me. Yeah. You know, last night, you know, we went out to a place that I've had successful 
at, you know, Knox at, and I went out there, and I didn't get a single thing. And I'm like, well, crap, you know, it looks so bad, you know. But I, I know, I know, it, I know it works. <laughs> What what does the missus think of your Bigfoot investigations? She thinks I'm, she thinks both of us are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know she must love you because she lets you come, right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. So so what do you have any um, aspirations of? Like meeting one? Sure. I would love to meet one. Really? Really? You'd walk up to one? I would. Wow. I don't think they're aggressive. Wow, okay. And Patrick here thinks they're aggressive, you know, and but I don't. What makes you think that? I just don't, I think they're curious. True. Curious about us or? Yeah. Yeah. I tell but you. But if I did, what a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, we might get it on film. <laughs> yeah. You'll be, you'll be famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is Mr. D you know, James, this is James being killed on tape by Sasquatch. I thought, I thought that was going to happen because you walked into the brush, knocking at them, and the only reason I knew you were alive because you would knock and then they would knock. And there was a couple times I started to come in after you because you paused. You paused, and I said, "Okay, I'm fixing to, to get out," and you'd knock, and then they, those two would knock, and I'm like, "God." So you know, you're putting this in a strange place. You know why? Why? So, I mean, if this happens, and there's a face-to-face -face between you and them, do we try to save you, or do we get behind the camera and watch your demise? <laughs> watch me get demolished. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it right here. We have the permission to watch him I die. I might not make my 70th birthday. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I can't allow that, because there are powers that be. That, in yes. our circle that would uh, hold me personally accountable so no matter what antics you pull do you think uh, James do you think do you think they're ever going to be accepted or discovered documented sure they've gotten very very popular in the past couple of years yeah we were already doing it before they became real popular right so what what what's your idea what would you see them doing to uh, okay let's say the cat comes out the bag and they're they're discovered what 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 would you like like to see happen as a result of that well I'd like to see him come up and get good footage of it yeah but what happens after now that we know that they're in the woods? Well, maybe we get to buy tags. Just peace of mind, really. So do we protect them or just leave them alone? Protect them. Protect them. Okay. Good. Yeah, we're we're strictly a no-kill right. Yeah. Research group. Yeah, they have really. The, they have the right to scratch out a living on this rock just like we do. Yeah. And really and truly, I think they were here before us anyway. Sure they were. The ancient Indians talked about them. You no wonder why they hate us, though. Look, everything we touch, we destroy. Mm-hmm. It's sad. I, I, I can't tell you how many years it's been since da, 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 da. That's all, folks. Yeah. That's all for this one right now. We, we will be back later when we get ready to go. Thank you so much for sharing yes, your uh, your insight and your stories. I appreciate it. All right, guys. We are. I don't even know if you can see us. Can you see yourself in that yeah. screen? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Give him the spiel because I can't. All right. Uh, light will blind it.
we finally made it to Arkansas. We're doing a night knock investigation, uh, hoping to uh, solidify single knock theory. It is Scott, me, Patrick, and my tracker, uh, James. So we're about to go dark. Yep. Okay. We'll be back. Here's the plan. We'll do an aggressive yell. Don't work here. We'll go back up to uh, tracking area two and try to do a knock again. trying to figure out we're fixing to go we didn't get the response that we wanted to James says he heard one after the first knock all the knocks that you heard were Patrick uh, trying to elicit the single knock theory so uh, then he did the aggressive y'all y'all heard that no real response so we're gonna try to salvage the night we have about another hour to go back to where we just came from and uh, we're gonna try the same thing knocking at uh, our his site too okay so y'all hang with us night's not over here at spot two then we get ready to try so we're about to go dark all right one. Temperature down to the outside temp. Just tried to, you heard the knocks we did and no response yet. Our theory is, I know they're just not moving until later in the night so we may try another spot or we may wait until like maybe 2 a.m. to go back out and try but we're gonna re we're gonna regroup is what we're, what we're gonna do so we still have a little bit of this night left and uh, we have a whole nother day and another night for tomorrow so we're gonna come up with a game plan if we gotta come up with something out of the box so hang with us we're boots on the ground we're we're doing our best later all right guys and gals it's 9 30 we're at site two on sunday we've had a talk last night we're thinking it's so damn hot they don't do their normal routine during the when sundown. We're thinking they're more active between 3 a.m. and noon during during the day because it's that hot. I mean, we were 
we were literally dying and we were out a good five hours or more five or six hours or even more than that yesterday in the heat three four different areas walking trudging and it like to kill us just because of the heat it takes your breath away the humidity it's like it's like working in a sauna even the camera lens was was tough but we're back in here so we're thinking come early in the morning and we're gonna sit for a while and listen and uh, just check this place out because maybe we're on the tail end now at 9 30 in the morning of them going back to wherever they're gonna hold up for the day. It's the idea because we have two full days of no knocking, no sounds, nothing. And Patrick has patterned these things for so long, you know what they do, but it's always, it's never really been in the summer. It's always in early spring where it's still, still cold or during the deer season when he's hunting. Never have we done this, has he really done this during the summer. So things are different. And that's is, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, if you're wearing a damn fur coat in the woods and what we're dealing with, you, you, you'd die. You wouldn't even make it. 15 or 20 steps. And you know our Sasquatch buddies, they're wearing a big fur coat. energy during the hottest parts of the day either. So we will be back. Yeah, okay. So what we're doing is we're doing a setup. We're setting up in the mornings. We have a creek crossing right down here. So we're going to get set up on this hill and sit here. And I've never been able to be in the woods and not get busted by them. But when Sam busts me in here, he'll start yelling and, and hollering at me. So we're going to get set up and either we're, they're not going to see us and we'll see them. Most likely what they'll do is they'll smell us or see us and go to hollering at us. Either way, we'll have an interaction. So that's what our goal is for this morning. can't put theories in practice unless you go out and test them. 
this may be boring for some people, but we're doing something about it. And we're testing a bunch of stuff. So, and just to let y'all know too, we're uh, we're intense this week. Joe. I'll go check this uh, creek crossing down here for new tracks. And we need to, we got two areas, other areas to go to. But I want to be back in here before daylight in the morning, maybe drive to the knock down there where we're parked at. Yeah, I want to get pictures of those three sticks by that one. Yeah, I want to check that out too. How far is that from right here? It's only about Forty yards, right? What sticks? I'd say sixty or seventy. Okay. So did you hear those knocks? I hear something. It only happened once, but it sounded like when people are doing something. Yeah. It didn't sound like an alert knock. Just just once. It, it was. Yeah. It would be loud, and then bang. like it was playing. It wasn't knocking at us. Whatever it was, it wasn't interacting with us. It was piddling around or something. And there's no house or man that could be working outdoors. About three-eighths to half a mile away. Yeah, we wouldn't have heard that. Yeah, we wouldn't have heard that. No, what I heard was right over there, but I also heard something, I heard something in the brush walking. The daddy. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. But we need to check the creek cross and see if there's new, and we can walk the creek. And I have I have found sign on that creek before, and we check the uh, sticks over and see if they're moved. I'm hoping this got those knocks because it was so it was so odd. And I can, I mean, if it's not humans, what the hell did that? There's no other creature that could make knocks like that. A knock phenomenon with hands. Yeah, a knock phenomenon. So. That's what I chased for a long time. And it's just something that anybody else would just be like, mm -hmm. eh, it's just, it's just I've, woods. I've done, I've been in the woods, I've been hunting. I heard a series of three knocks when I was a kid. Knock, knock, knock. A few minutes later, knock, knock, knock. I thought someone was building a deer stand, <clears throat> but it wasn't. So. All right, let's gather up our stuff. Baby, baby, same time.
Okay, so this is the SAM 3 knock. We heard this before the 6. So we're going to do the same thing. This up here is your general audio waveform. Down here is your spectral waveform. Um, I'm going to point out where the knocks happen. It's not as easy to see these uh, as the 6 knock waveform really shows it well. But I'll do my best. Right here is knock 1, knock 2, and knock 3 is right up in here. Uh, a lot of this, this right here is some sort of clicking sound that's close to us. But I know this is the knock. I know this is the second. And right up in here is the third. This, I haven't isolated this, but I think this is something from me. But let's go ahead and listen to the three knock. It's something, but I can't tell what. Right here. It's something, but I can't tell what. This it's is something, something I, I don't what. know. Knock, knock, knock. It's something, but I can't tell what. One, three. Okay, this is the analysis of the Big Sam Area 2 6 knock. Um, I have, uh, this is the waveform of the audio segment. This is the spectral uh, wave. Okay, And what you can see is right here in the middle in this black. This is where I say, hey, do you hear that? Now, what I've done is, in order to uh, raise the levels of the knocks, um, I would have raised my voice as well. It would have blown everybody out because the knocks happen, and then I hear it and say something, and the knocks continue. So I've had to isolate this section right here of me talking, and I lowered that, but just the opposite. Uh, for the knocks, I have elevated that. So these areas are uh, the purples and the reds. This is like uh, standard noise. This is uh, outside, the humming of outside, birds, uh, us walking, uh, my, uh, my breath. Okay, that's all this. But... What's really cool about the six knocks is that you see these oranges down here? Okay. Six knocks, six spectral orange wave files. So we have one, two, no wait, one, two, three, and then I speak over it, four, five, six. So can you see that? So it starts here, knock, one. Knock two, knock, knock three, knock four, knock five, and knock six. So let's listen to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is about 250 yards away from us. I'm going to put a, uh, a graphic of the aerial imagery where we are and... Uh, where the knocks were coming from. You could probably see that. I probably already started it. So I'm going to do this for the other files as well. All right, this last series of three is very difficult to hear. Uh, there were the first three, then the six, and then these three. And of course, you can barely hear the last one of this three uh, because we hear it. I recognize it and say, shh. And by that time, the last one kind of sounds off. You, 
it's very difficult to hear these. The best one you can hear is one. So we're just going to go ahead and play it. Push. Now that was three. Push. It's right in here. Now that was three. It Tip. sounds like Push. a gun. Boom. Now that was three. Tip. Push. Now that was three. Tip. Push. Now that was. So as you can see, that one was a bit difficult to hear. But needless to say, we did hear it. We did hear another set of three, and we're just put putting it up there because it's evidence that we did get. Okay. Thanks. All right, this is where we were yesterday. We were somewhat thinking this is some kind of wallowing hole for pigs. All of this in here, where you see it's clear, is just completely... It's areas that flood, but then it's been upturned by pigs. You know, we came here yesterday, all the soil was fresh. Go down, right in that. contrast is real and then they go up the side of this bank step over the wall and then it's a whole nother ridge right over there to get to the other side and then there's another ridge that goes up that way and you can follow the ridge back but what's odd here is look at these three sticks I don't even think they come from that blue beach right there it's four sticks just leaning up, straight up and down. So we got one, two, three, and the fourth one is right here. And they're just leaning there. They're just leaning. They broke off and leaning there. They broke off like like someone was piddling and just put them around, just put them back. That's not a Y. This is a stick. Oh yeah, that's, I see it. That's an X. Look at that. And you got these two sticks here that I don't know what. Look, there's the X. It make it does make an X if you're traveling that way. So there's a broken stick right up here. And see where that dirt is? That new fresh dirt. Yeah. There's a trail that comes down that kind of comes down and around that hill. Right. That sounds trail from last year he would come down there he would come down here he would walk he'd walk right here he'd go back up that hill I was set up where those ferns were because it was for the first time I had an idea I knew where he was going to be at when he was going to be there and I could get set up on his first time I had an advantage on the little sucker. Right. So I set up right there in those ferns, waiting on him. And then I'm sitting there, and I hear the gunshots run off, ring out. And I don't think he was shot at. I think it was shot. Yeah, he probably got Because it. The, way, the way he's acted towards me, the closest I've gotten to him since the shooting is 115 yards. And that was when I was fishing in the spring. After that... I haven't knocked with him, he hadn't called to me. And he won't get within 115 yards of me after the shooting. But now, we have the X here, and we have sticks that are broke off and just leaned up there. And what does that mean? I mean, that's his trail. Now he, he quit using that trail when he got shot at, but now it looks like there's fresh activity on it. So, and with an X, you know, I never, put a whole lot into X structures but there's certainly that's little Sam's trail and that's certainly an X and we still don't know what the heck that fresh upturned see up uh, there's a hole oh there, there is a hole in that that's right you walk and I'm that. wondering if they don't take those sticks and go in that hole for trying to dig something out yeah I don't know and that is big Scott Bigfoot Explorer He's taking a picture of an X that is made by Little Sam that we believe since that's Little Sam's trail up the hill. 
and it has been a knock poor weekend but we found plenty of tracks uh, we had we had a couple of loud series of knocks 250 yards away but I'm not sure if that was to us for us or, for, or if they're just messing around but there's no there's no houses back that way either no that's all deer lease yeah it's just woods because I looked at that on the map while I was sitting down it's yeah. like that's that's where you said man that's just contiguous yeah. The nearest Wood. house is a half, about three eighths to half a mile away on the other side. And it just as clear as day went knock, yep. knock, knock, knock. Yep. The thing is, I never heard four knocks. Other people report four knocks, and they have listening devices and cameras with them. I've never had four knocks just carrying a knock. I've had ones and twos and threes. So. Oh God! Now we're getting on the. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Maybe they're reacting to you. All right, guys. We are uh, we're doing a little tracking. But this is kind of a sucky situation. This is a place where Patrick had what he called a corridor, a place where would be in here and they would literally use this trail so much that it made a big open corridor area well we're visiting and as you can see it's been select cut logging operation that's going on here so he's kind of bummed about the area there's no I mean this is uh, active like we saw the so the cutters, the skidders, the loaders, the logs on the log deck waiting. Uh, so we thought we'd do some tracking in here and just check out a few things. So it's 217 on September 1st. Hot as all get out. And we're in a clear cut. Not a clear cut, a select cut. This is a select cut. We have an insatiable lust for wood. Until that changes. Yeah, well, it ain't no corridor no more. No. It was really, they made a goddamn junk pile of it. This is just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm beside myself. I was in here last December. I had about a five and a half foot wide trail beat down to the dirt coming right through here and coming into this bottom. Yeah. And now it's gone. But it's, it's just a dime to be made, dude. They'll make, they'll make the deal. Oh, yeah. It just um, sucks it was one of your spots. Um, that doesn't scratch the surface of what I'm feeling right now. Because I had. Coming in through here, it was such a beautiful place. Now, I just told him when I walked in, I said, this is like a park. This place must have been unbelievable oh, in here. it was beautiful. When, before the cut. It was beautiful. It come in, and when I walked in here in December, it was beat down to the dirt, and I'm trying to figure out why, what is so wide? This is five and a half foot wide. Yeah. It come up over the rise, over this rise here. It come up over the rise, kind of sweep, swept into this into this bottom and, and it's just dispersed yeah and I'm just trying to figure out what is up and then I realized this is a corridor and I said and I come back here a second time and I just got I could I was too creepy to hunt so I left this first time back since and it's destroyed yeah. destroyed well it's better to find out now though Boy, it's just a great weekend, huh? <laughs> it's been difficult. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. Well, hey, let's get to let's get to area one where we got a uh, where we got shadowed by something, and maybe we'll draw up some attention. This wide. So where so where was she at again? You were in that tree. I was in that tree, a climber. Yeah. She was on that ridge right there. 
there's a bunch of elderberries there and she was in the in the you know i didn't know she was there like waist deep or a little bit higher oh no i'm talking a little bit oh yeah over and i'm sitting in that stand and i i had you know and it's dead quiet the woods are dead quiet and i had a mosquito land on my chins and i so i picked my arm up slowly and i flick that mosquito off and up there you know i'm about even with that ridge in the stand and that that brush does this and it's running this way it's going as she's running just not 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 as she's running goes up that way yeah well at some point you know she flanks you and comes behind you that's right she gets to the winds going that way yeah she gets downwind of me this is before i know anything but remember yeah she was downwind of me directly downwind on this, on that hilltop yeah so i get down stash it and i start picking my way up through this creek bottom thinking about coconut shrimp or steak what am i having and when i get up there to, to that spot where it goes she's, up she's staring at me i feel her stare you look to your left yeah and then so i turn right and i start going up that hill and she crosses she goes out a little ways and comes up through the brush and she's so fast I can't pick her, I can't catch her. So I take a half step and I see her from one tree and she's in midair and I can still see her. You can't forget the image. I mean, she's, she's leaping. She's not looking at me. She's looking at where she's landing at behind the next tree. She lands, she bounces and she bounces. The sun's behind her and I can see the hair and all the everything, all the colors and the little split blonde ends on her hair yeah. as she went behind the tree. And that's when I stumbled and almost fell. Mm. And I, I every, every, everything in me wanted to take off running, so I started jogging because there's no sense in me running up this hill and tiring myself time I get to the top of it. Yeah. And then, but you know, the real race is when I hit that damn road. When I hit that damn road, the real race was on. So. So. You all right? Yeah. He's having an anxiety attack. I only had nightmares for two years with this one. <laughs> but I, anyway, I saw her jump from tree to tree. She bounced behind that tree. You can see, and I was just right there. You could see everything about her. The muscle definition, her legs, her breasts, her, you know, the long hair, uh, yeah. her, the hair on her foot, where she, and she, her eyes are, are on the ground where she's going to land at and she hits the ground and she bounces and you can see how the sun's going down and I was over there and that sun just passed she passed between the sun you can see the, the colors of the hair and the, the blonde split ends and and that's when I immediately went into holy crap what is this <laughs> this ain't supposed to be here and as I'm jogging up this hill I'm rolling through my roll decks of animals there's no way this is supposed to be here no way this is supposed to be here what could this be and it rolls back to that book that i read when i was at the library and it said yeah. bigfoot and that was the only animal i could put this picture to and i said but those aren't supposed to exist they're not supposed to be real right and she parallels me through there the whole way up to the trail the whole way up to the trail Yeah. Now, what happened to the flat club? I'm jogging, and she's still going tree to tree, tree to tree. She's 15 yards behind me, 15 yards left side, tree to tree. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more elderberry through here. All this scrub is short. Right. There's elderberry, elderberry through these all these woods, and she's using the elderberry. She's using the, uh, the, the topography and the trees, going from base to tree, base to tree. And I'm jogging this whole way. And I'm trying to figure out what is this thing, what does it want, how do I get away from it, what's the contingency plan, and I just keep jogging, and I'm like, okay, she assumes I'm going that way, but she don't know I'm going that way. There's got to be a pause. So I just keep jogging, and jog and jog. It don't take long to make this stick and jog. Listening intensely right now. I'm listening intensely. 
I am listening intensely for a pause. And that's my window to take off. Jogging, jogging. And I get right here and hear a pause. She pauses right there. See that pine tree right there? She's paused behind it. She pauses. And I leap her out right here. Thank you. And I'm off. I kick up dust. I kick up dust running. And as I'm running, She's running in the plateau area. No. Paralleling you? No. No. I make it all the way to right here. And I look back. Come stand here. I look back. She was behind that tree. She runs out. Stay there. She runs out right beside this little tree here. Right here. I'm right there looking back and she goes like a kid. And she takes off. And now I'm still running and I've made it another 30 yards. Her legs take off and they're just and they catch me. She catches me. Before you get to the log? Oh yeah. Uh Right here, I look back. She stomped her, she scuffed her feet. I swap hands, I put the rifle in my, with one hand, dead run. And I'm a dead run. And I make it to about, now I'm moving. You know, I wasn't quite as fat as I am now, I'm moving. I get to about right here. And she goes, she's right hey. beside, now she's beside me. Right there beside me. And we're at a dead run and she's right beside me. We're at a dead run. This is all this log was about that half the uh road. Made it about that high. Oh that and log right there? And I yeah, and I cleared it. I had to stop and climb over it coming in, I cleared it. So on your way out, you just left. Oh yeah, I just, I just, I look like a Olympic runner. I just jumped and cleared the log and kept on going. There was Mr. Dean, and she was right there. And we're moving. You made that turn. The dim road makes the dog leg it comes back and goes straight back to the truck. So now this is where I panicked at. You know, I had relief. Okay, I know where I am now. You know, I'm relieved. I know I'm about 115 yards off the truck. But I also panicked. Because I can't believe she let me make it this far. Now she's got to do something. Whatever she's got to do to for whatever end she wants to affect, it's got to be now. And she's still running right there. i tell you what. I can see why it took an hour to get out of here or however long the well, whole thing this, lasted I made this trip I made this trip in probably three and a half minutes four minutes I mean oh from God. from the time I started running from the time I hit the road hit the dim road yeah. now from the time she busted the brush and I sat there and stand longer it was about an hour and 15 minutes right she was downwind watching me and smelling me. So the whole ordeal when you noticed yeah. it, it was about, a, about an hour. Yeah. But when I when I realized what was going on and I and took off running, run. yeah, I was a dead run. I was moving. And I, I didn't have this. You know. <laughs> I was uh 6'2", 215 pounds. In pretty good shape. You know, I, I was packing with 80 pound packs in my back through the mountains. You know, for two years before this happened. In the good old days. Yeah. I did run. Everything's happening this fast, this fast. All this green stuff is whipping her. 
this green stuff is just whipping, whipping, whipping her as she's running through it. And you're seeing it like... Yeah, yeah. When she's running, her arms are a blur. Her hands are, and arms are a blur as she's running. And her legs don't work like mine. I'm smoothly... You know, I, like my foot's here. I'm landing out here with a jump. You know, running. Her legs are... Choo -choo 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 -choo. Extremely like, fast, but choppy. Yeah, scamp like a scamper fast. Like yeah. Scampering fast. Yeah. If she was like this, but running. Yeah, I, had like she, yeah, I, had a, I had a plan to just turn around and shoot if she'd done that. Yeah. If I've heard her crossing this trail here. To come right here. I, I, had, a, I had the plan to just spin around and empty a weapon. But, well, at that point, I mean, you had no choice. Yeah, I didn't want she to. She was that close. I didn't want to. I hope she's chasing you. I hope she stayed away. I, I really did not want to ever pull a trigger on right. anything like that. But if I had to, I'm not going to die because I don't know what the hell you are. You know, this is 2009. No, 2003. This is 2003, and I, I, I didn't even have this on. This wasn't even a blip on the radar. This didn't exist. Right. get right here that brush pushed back none of this was here you see how that brush line goes out yeah she followed that brush line out and I said oh thank God she's going away from me and we're running make about another 50 yards and I see that that brush line comes back up to the trailhead yeah and she sees it too and she's still running parallel with me she's just out there you know that, that, that brush line goes to that trailhead. See this brush line he's talking about right here, this ridge line here. If you follow that ridge line, watch my finger, it's gonna go right in the middle of us. And that's where they meet up. Here. I'm running like a yeah. deer. And, uh, and I just pass within yards of her at the trailhead. And it's not that you ran faster than her, it just... Well, this is... I really thought about this, you know, I read a, a lot of the comments, oh, you cannot run one. I know I know, I can't run one, but I was armed. If she come up behind me, catching me, I would turn her shot. I don't know if she could sense that, but to me, it's kind of like... She eased down some. It's kind of like the first time World War II uh, German German built jets were engaging prop planes from the United States. The jets had a problem with overpassing. Right. And so they had to gauge, even though they're faster and more powerful, they had to gauge just slower. right for an interception. Yeah. And so even though she was faster than me, uh, she was experienced enough not to try to come behind me she wanted to catch me from the side but the timing for timing her thing. timing was off yeah and she had to time me and she she was doing a very good job at it until i caught another gear that i didn't even know i had i didn't even know i had this gear i mean i went from running as fast as i could to overdrive and i was really moving and i did that for about the last you know 50 yards and she's over there coming around faster than me, but she's timing me, trying to trying to trying to get an interception on me. And by speeding up, I beat her by about two and a half seconds. And I changed my time that I was gonna get there by two and a half seconds by getting another gear. And I think that's what threw the timing off. That's why I passed in front of her by 10 yards. It's not that I outran her. It's just that I, I changed her time well, and know, her strategy. Another, another thing that's happening within milliseconds is that both of you are dodging obstacles. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, she's running through the trees. There's got to be time for that. Yeah. She's Regardless running. of how fast yeah. you're going. So, uh, yeah. So I pass. I pass right through this brush. And I look to my left. And you can see where the sun's coming down. The sun's coming down over here. Yeah. And it's shining into the brush right in her face. And when I looked in her eyes, I wasn't interested in color or eyebrows or chin. I wanted to know the mechanics of her eyes. And I looked at the mechanics of her eyes. The mechanics of her eyes were reflecting the sun yeah. brightly. 
And so, the, and that's key in all the nighttime stuff I've seen them do too. Right. I think the light, their eyes reflect and collect light and they can see greatly at night. So, ah, I got chills. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta understand, I was on this road for two years with a nightmare. Every night on this road, running for my life for two years. Right. To uh, to, before I could suppress it, until 2009, when when I don't know why, I don't even know why I had to have that encounter. Well, you went hunting really, because your son begged you to go. Yeah, but it's not like I went out there and said, "Hey, Mr. Sasquatch." No, uh, <laughs> you know, it just happened to you again. Yeah, what's yeah? How lucky am I? You're a magnet. So you cursed from that. Yeah. Some people I never wanted to know. Yeah. I just most but, most people who don't want their encounter known will say that. I didn't want to know, but I didn't have a choice. Yeah. But now that I do know, do I ignore it? See, I couldn't ignore I couldn't ignore it the right. second time. You're not that kind of person though. You no. have to understand how things work. Yeah. I gotta understand. Because I spend a lot of time out in the woods. I wanna know the safety factor of these things. So, still running? Still running. She's right there. She's coming around this bend in this brush. She, she actually passes, see that big pine? Yeah. She actually passes just on this, on the outside that of that pine, Right pine. there in the middle of the screen. And you can see where the vehicle is. And this was, this was, this, this was a lot brushier. You see that brush like that, that whiskey brush? It come up to on both sides right here. Yeah. And it so it funneled you into this area. Yeah. And it lasts. And this this is eroded so much. This was real sharp. It, it went all the way to there and it dropped just like this did. Yeah. All this is eroded. And she come right through here. She look through between these two little pine saplings. Yeah. That's where she come through. And she come she come through here and Stand right here. This is her. Jesus. And I jumped because all that was sharp and it was up, you know, and I jumped. God, what was that, 12 feet? 12, I'd say 14? about 10 yards. Yeah. She's right here. She's not wearing a hat. She's not <laughs> wearing glasses. And you look dead in my eyes. And what I saw was bright reflection of the sun. And the sun was a little lower too. The sun was about right there, you know. And this was her when I passed that spot. So you, yeah, you definitely got a shot at. And then this is where you dove, huh? Yeah, this is where I jumped. I leapt from right here, and I was traveling so fast, I landed out there and twisted my ankle. My truck was actually parked right there. And she stayed inside this brush? And she stood there perfectly still. Never moved. And, and you just didn't look back, jumped in your truck, got your keys, got the shit out. I didn't even hit first gear, I hit second gear, dumped the clutch, and I slung gravel. And uh, I got around the curve, next curve down, and I said, there's no way that happened. That's not real. They don't exist, there's no way that happened. And I spent the next two years running down this road in my nightmares until I could repress it enough for a couple years to have some peace and quiet until I went down south further and was hunting with my son and had one right. come up to my deer stand sniffing that night, right. yeah. And after that night, there was no putting, no more putting the cat back in the bag. I've got to understand what this is. I've got to debunk these. There's no way they're real. No, that was six years later. Yeah, um, that was 2009 and then, uh, it was 2017 uh, when I actually had studied and knocked enough and experienced enough to say that these are real beings. I can really track them. I have pictures of the tracks. Um, I've heard their knocks. I've taken people out and have them witness them with me. And they're real. They're very elusive. They can see at night. They use topography and brush against you. It's hard to get a, a bearing on them but uh they are real they're they are there and uh there is a safety factor i'm studying and it's, it goes back to if they don't know you know most time you're okay as long as you don't go make a mistake like i did 
you know if you're just going to an area that people hunt in and you go hunting and you walk back out and you don't notice their footfalls out 60 80 yards or whatever you'll be you'll be, you'll be just fine you will not ever know or most likely ever see one just don't make any mistakes well you heard it from the man and uh, I didn't we planned to go do some do some tracking but it actually turned into his him reaccounting the the encounter uh, so we just decided to film the whole thing as you can see I'm dying but we're going to get in the AC for a little while because we're soft of course I've been recording nothing but that's the job of a squatcher at any moment you can get something so the camera usually stays right on standby hit one button and the audio recorder is going the whole time so we're putting boots on the ground and killing ourselves for what a awareness validation trying to uh, prove the single knock theory I know we're having basic conversation here and what we're finding out we're reiterating this again but uh, the heat has, has totally uh, all the aspects that Patrick has patterned have primarily been in the spring early spring where it's still cold leaves off the trees you know we're thinking the reason why we're not getting knocks and which we got a few this morning both of us are convinced there were two sets of different knocks a set of what we described to be playful knocks which were anywhere from 60 to 80 yards away and then there was uh, a sequence of aggressive loud knocks powerful knocks that was about 250 yards away so we're I'm desperately want to see if if uh, if this came out on the audio recorder and if so of course we're gonna be playing the hell out of them because we're also going to show the map we're going to show the map and show you that there is no there's no deer stands back there there's no homes there's no construction going on back there uh, if somebody happened to walk we had walked in 150 yards so that's close to 400 500 yards someone would have to go just to go back there and do a sequence of knocks when I say a sequence the louder ones were one two three four then about four minutes later one two three and that's all we ever heard and Patrick and I talked at lunch and we were saying what do humans do that make a knocking sound that only needs seven hits? Seven hits. Now what are you going to do with four hits and then three hits That's, that has anything to do with construction? You know. And you and I both know if they were nailing something, a nailing sound is completely different is kind of like a ting sound to it until you get to the solid part of ending the nail into the into the subject matter well the power it took to make those knocks yeah. at 250 yards out the power of it yeah was astounding it was <laughs> it was the extremely pow powerful the power whatever they hit with was hard as a rock and whatever they hit Mm -hmm. was hard as a rock yeah it was bang 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 you know yeah and uh it wasn't a gunshot no because uh, we both described this we've heard that and and gunshots make more of a pop mm -hmm. a pop, pop 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 quick these things had a had no had a resonance yeah yeah, it did. So, hopefully we got those on audio. And, uh, we're dead. We're going to hydrate up and, uh, figure out what we're going to do next. Of course, we still got tonight. We're going to do some knock missions. So, we'll be back later.
Okay, this is an area for tonight's investigation. Uh, we're going to do a night knock investigation here. It's definitely creepy. It's uh, The heat has been oppressive. It's really been shutting knocks down, even though we did have a series of knocks come in in Area 2. As far as getting interactive knocks, has been a challenge. It's just the heat has been terrible. But I really think that they're, you know, I think they're getting up around between 1 and 3 in the morning. So hopefully in the morning we'll have something productive there. But hope maybe tonight. Don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, it's finally dark. We are uh, we're we're getting ready to do the knock at the new spot. Uh, Patrick filled y'all in on this a little earlier when we were in that field. We repositioned, found a decent elm or ash, hard wood, and a good out. And uh, he's letting me do the honors of hit knock in tonight's home. I'll try it, but the the camera will go dark. Uh, put the audio on both the camera and uh, my audio recorder will still be going, okay? So. The base, the basically all I do is, you can look in there, but it's mm -hmm. going to be black. Okay. Generally, I put it right here to kind of hide a little bit of that. Okay. But you just got to hold it so we can pick up the extra Right there. Which the keys are, uh, hit with the big end. The keys are in ignition just in case anything goes wrong. On just the information, your scent is blowing into the woods. That means anything coming to you will be coming upwind. Whoa. All right, we're here. We're at uh, what Patrick calls uh, Site 2, his Site 2. And we're fixing to do another knock series here. So once again, uh, we have the audio going. And we're going to go dark on the uh, video camera. We're going to turn these lights out and Hopefully the object here is to corroborate the single knock theory. This area here today where we heard the playful type knocks and the aggressive knocks, that's where we are. Here's the tree. Right there by your door. Or either one you want.
I do 45 here. It's a nice quiet weekend for them. Yeah. I do want to do a whoop. Here? Mm -hmm. um, actually from my door. <laughs> I might got that. There was a knock out there. Yeah. Straight in front of me. Straight in front of me. About 120 yards. I hope the mic got it. Okay, this next clip here uh, was the last night we were at Area 2 where we heard the knocks uh, that day. We came out uh, nighttime on the road next to the truck and uh, Patrick did a whoop and we actually got a very soft but uh, a distinguishable knock, not a forceful knock. But it's almost like it wasn't a knock against a tree. It could have been a knock with two sticks in each hand, clanging them together. Now, what you're going to hear is there is a lot of insect life that's going on. You're going to hear the whoop, and for a few seconds, you're going to hear the insects. And then you're going to hear a section that the insects are going to get louder because I couldn't drown those out. And when that gets louder, looking, uh, listen for the, uh, the clank sound. It's a clank. And then the volume will go back down. But the actual sound that you're listening to is when the insect life ramp up. Okay? I'll tell you right before it happens. Let's listen. Here it comes. Clank. Now what we can do is we can come right here and we just play it over and over. It's there. It's there. We heard it, and that's the example of the last one we got at night at Area 2. Thanks. It just didn't work. It's been so hot. We're thinking that it has something to do with it. Every time Patrick has, has done this, it's been in the spring, it's been cool, it's been flooded, it's moved them in. So there's a few things involved, but Patrick's nervous, so we're going to get in the vehicle and uh, move down the road a little bit. And when we can talk, we can wrap up a little bit later. Okay, thanks for sticking with us. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all one thing. Boots on the ground is one, is, is one thing. 
But when you come out to an area like this place and you shut all the lights off and you get out and the guy who, is, who has encountered this <laughs> I'm just tired. doesn't get out the vehicle with you, <laughs> you start thinking scary thoughts <laughs> while you're next to the tree because you have to get off the road to find a decent tree to hit. So, you know, they could just reach out right there and you wouldn't even know it and grab me by the head and suck me in the woods. So, it's a, um, it's a bit of an anxiety <laughs> issue to take this and do a knock in this area. So, I just thought I'd like that. Alright, YouTube. Bigfoot Explorer. Scott and Patrick. It is Monday, September 2nd at 11 o'clock a.m. We have concluded the North Louisiana Sasquatch mission. We came here with the goal to corroborate the single knock theory. And what we mean by that, if you don't know, uh, check out Patrick Vaughn Chronicles. I think it's uh, show three or four where Patrick talks about his studies, his 10 year studies doing the single knock theory, how he figured that out. <clears throat> and basically what the single knock theory is, you know, you go out, you make a knock, one knock, and you time it. I'm not, I'm not going into detail on it. And they answer back. Knock again, they answer back with a single knock. Okay? That's a safe way. Go watch those videos and listen to that single knock theory and try in your spot but that's what we wanted to do we wanted to get it on video and audio and say okay his theory on single knocks uh, is what we just said and now we're going to show it and or we're going to audio record it to prove that theory well it didn't work out it just didn't happen. And I'm going to let Patrick give a rundown on, you know, each of our spots we went to and us doing it. And it didn't, I mean, you don't have to go in depth at each spot, but, but uh, why it didn't work and give your thoughts to why it might not work, which is very plausible. Um, we went to different areas. We went to the south end of the parish doing a knock study in an area that I usually have no problem getting knocks in and we zeroed out. Went to uh, other areas and, and we were running 18 to 20 hour days doing this and the heat being a, a, just as oppressive as it has been I think they're laid up. Now when we got into a specific area of where they're known to be at, uh, Scott knocked and we still couldn't get them to come up and respond to a knock. And we know they're there from tracking. Uh, I did get a knock come in on a whoop and we got it on audio. Right after Scott was knocking, I stepped around the truck and did a whoop. And I think they come up. I think they come up. Look, you know, got closer because of Scott's of the knock, but they didn't answer the knock. I whooped and they answered. The, uh, they knocked at a whoop, and that I haven't had done before. I'm not exactly sure. I can't. I can't theorize why that would happen. You know, I, I do have my own theories, but they're not. You know, it would be my own opinion. It's not proven. It's not a proven point. All I, I do know that he knocked. They did not answer. I whooped and they did answer. Now that does not corroborate single knock theory. Single knock theory is very specific. You're knocking and they knock and they respond and they come in closer on you doing the knock. We have not done that. We, I think we will. Things cool off, but it's been a very busy, hard run, boots from the ground weekend. Based yeah. on the weekend and well, Last night, you were oh, knocking. Last, yeah, I forgot you to talk about that. You were knocking last night. 
and when I whooped, I got an answer and a knock. It's on audio. So I got a, I got an intelligent response, uh, an intelligent knock response off of a whoop. So that to me that speaks a, a lot. I mean I've never had a knock come in on a whoop, but I still had an intelligent knock come in when I whooped. So it's not just an abstract knock in the woods. I did get an intelligent response. You know, and it's it's an odd way to do it, but this is also an odd time of year for me to be doing this as well. And I've never knocked at them in their area. Uh, you know, they have specific areas that they move through throughout the year. And the spring is when I normally have the, the, the best place to knock at them and get the responses. Right. And then late spring, early summer, I'm tracking them. And then late summer, you know, early fall, I can still come in, find the tracks, and do my own thing. But you you're, know, gen you're generally tracking during this time. Yeah, you're not this, trying to elicit yeah. now this time communication. Of year, this, this is the time of year I'm tracking. And there's no shortage of tracks. You know, we found tracks and tracks on top of tracks. Um, Most were inconclusive, though. Um, except, yeah, but you got video of that one with the five little toes. Yeah. Now, uh, and that was a little track. And that's a weird thing for me because, you know, Sam was the smallest one. At an eight-inch track is when I started tracking him, and his his about he's about a ten-inch track now, but now here I got a little six-inch, and I'm not I'm not I'm I don't want to confirm this until I actually start tracking and picking up contracts consistently at that size and be able to find six, ten, and then Sasha size track. So when I when I do that, that's when I'll actually say, hey, this is real thing and it's confirmed for sure right meaning what he's saying there is it's possible Sasha has another child because of the six inch yeah. track so what we want to do is while he's he's up here his amongst a thousand other things that you want to do for Sasquatch uh, scouting he's going to be on the lookout for those smaller six inch tracks Mm -hmm. And then if he finds additional ones that match what we have, and then there's Sasha tracks with it, that that tells you a lot. Yeah. And uh, uh, family's expanding, yeah. possibly. I, yeah. I don't jump to assumptions. I don't throw anything out there that I don't have 100%. This is what I found, and I have pictures of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I try not to assume anything. I do have theories. You know, I plot along a line of things that I find and I'm always reaching out with another theory until I find another spot to plot on that map you know so I don't assume anything or assert anything of my own self jumping up oh it's a squatch no I don't do that I find the evidence I find the tracking evidence I find the knocking evidence uh, and this is the first time this is the first year I've found broken trees over trails. over our trails I found one in July this weekend, I think we found three trails with broken, with broken uh, trees pushed down over them. And then we find an X structure. I've never found an X structure. That's the weirdest thing. Now, did you want to talk about last night when we didn't have recorders going? Uh, yeah, we we can talk about uh, last night in camp. Um, but a as we're watching this, though, too, we went to last night's. Uh, knock and whoop session that he did. Now those speakers were turned up, dead quiet in here. I mean, it's one, it's 1:30 in the morning that we're 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 uh, analyzing this audio, and we're he's he's on there whooping and me knocking through those speakers, and we're listening. Um, and what I'm trying to say is that audio wasn't just heard by our ears. I mean, it was going out on the airwaves, which we didn't think about. And uh, so then what happened? Um, we've been back approximately 45 minutes to an hour and two very loud, powerful knocks comes into camp from about 60 yards away. Boom, boom. And Scott and I look at each other 
and it's, it's I mean dumbfounded. We're like it's almost it's the same power, same resonance, but just two, but just two of them, as what we had heard at 11:57 this morning, yesterday morning. But it's just two of them. Boom, boom, and then we sit there and we're like, oh wow, you know, right here. We immediately got the phone out, looked on the app to see. Oh, that might be a house back there. Somebody's got a bonfire going. It's Sunday. They got off Monday. They're doing something. There's nothing back there either. There's nothing back there but the thickest woods mm-hmm. imaginable. Nothing. Yep. And this was close. So go ahead. And then within about four to five minutes further away, going back to the direction of where we, we were just did the knocks and got the uh, knock on the whoop, it, it was going in that general direction. And there was two more powerful knocks further back, maybe uh, 150 yards. Boom, boom. <laughs> so we had two powerful knocks right here at camp. Two powerful knocks 150 yards out going the general direction that we came from. Where we were Doing the night at, study. Doing the night study in Area 2 where the tracks are on the creek. Where we got eight, we got eight knocks out of that one area. You yeah, know, we're we not got, far. Yeah, we got we got four knock, we got a three knock, we went back doing knocks, got a, did a whoop, got a knock back. And now here as, we are. As the crow flies from here to site one and two is what? I'd say three miles. Okay. And three miles is not a big deal for them to travel. Especially if they're just waking up yeah. and wanting to travel. And so, you know, and of course now I'm gonna go a little theoretical here. This is my own theory, Wait, but Hmm? Oh, and and uh, how probably long? four I, I, minutes. I'd say yeah. four minutes, maybe yeah. four minutes after the two powerful knocks, 150 yards out. Close. Just about 50 yards, 40, 50 yards out there, there was a whoop. And and our and we just and he and I were sitting there thinking, okay, a mouth drop. You know, there was two powerful knocks here. There's two powerful knocks, you know, going further away. We're thinking, okay, they're leaving the area. And then right out here was a wolf. And look, it's not a coyote. It's not dogs. We had dogs going off right here to the side of us. We easily picked that out. Those are dogs. Earlier tonight at another spot, we picked out uh, some coyotes. What we're telling you is exactly what it was. I mean, I don't have Mm -hmm. proof of it because I wasn't right next to them, but it it wasn't any other sound. Well, the recorder chip was in my computer. Yeah. You know, we didn't have any recording going. Not to mention, I'm still somewhat inexperienced. Um, I never thought, I mean, this is safe zone. Well. But Squatch doesn't say that this is safe zone. So I don't have any recorders on camp. Yeah. Which maybe from now on we should have our recorders on. Yeah, exactly. Now, a little bit of theory on this. Okay, we were back there. We got knocked at. We got we got told to get out. Three knocks tells tells us get out. We go back there knocking. We're not in the creek bottom. We're up the hill, on in our improved area, trying to do. We're on a road so we know, can get the hell out if we yeah, have to. We're not going that, and we're in trying, the woods. And we're trying not to be intrusive at because night. we were already told get out. Yeah. So we're not intrusive. We're up the hill so that our sound carries better, and we're right between two breaks, and there and I know there's a road crossing there that leads to the tracks that are in the creek. Trail crossing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we we do the knocks there. We don't get a response to the knocks, but I do believe one came closer due to the knocks. And when I did the whoop, we get a knock response. We leave there, we come here, and we get they come and we get knocked at. Now, I don't believe it's a coincidence that we went knocking in their area, and, the, and then when we get to our area, something comes in knocking in our area. I don't believe it's a coincidence. You know, that's, you know, I believe that, that, that they travel that area, you know, that distance that three miles. That's my theory that they traveled that three miles, but it is a fact that we went to their area knocking, and then when we come back to our, our area, within an hour, we're being knocked out in our area. Those right. are, you know, and, and and I'm still being schooled primarily on tracking here. 
and I'm going to tell you exactly like it is. He's my friend. I believe him. But I haven't experienced his two encounters, his 10 years of study, and what he's gained and what he does know. So for me, when he says, you know, my theory is, you know, we went in their area. And then they, they came to our area. It is difficult for me to believe that it's the same amount of same the, the same squatch that are coming over here. But I don't have the insight. I have to question it. So I'm just letting y'all know that I don't automatically believe or project exactly what he's saying, and he understands that about me. Uh, and he's cool. He's cool with that. And that's what. That's why we're together. Uh, to start putting and documenting everything that he's learned down, so that we can say, okay, this part of the puzzle, uh, seeing Gonak theory, check, it works. Here's the evidence that we got. If you still don't believe, you still don't like the evidence. That's fine. But for us, we're in it, we're doing it, we heard it, we saw it. For me, that's checked off. Okay, what's the next thing? Do they, will they track, what's the home range? Then we'll go on that exp uh, expedition. We'll, we'll keep trying to figure out pieces of the puzzle to their day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. I think we're committed to try and do that. This is an earnest study, doing our best not to project our own feelings or theories. This is an earnest study of documenting this happened, this happened, this happened. And it is difficult, you know, um, I, I always have to work on theory because what happens and then, okay, where do you, you know, there's no book on studying this really. I mean, you know, how do you, how do you proceed forward from a point of, of information that you've been given from a species that isn't supposed to exist? So I have to work on theory a certain point, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say, okay, this is a definite thing. I go from that point with a theory until I find and get another piece of information yeah. from them, and I keep plodding along, and that's what the study is, is the information. and what was what was the correct uh, answer or the correct uh, way about going and getting these getting the information now, right use your theory and really, as the starting a point. travel point yeah and sweep it out to you until you generate enough interest of them to give you another piece of information and and the more you do that the more you'll see the the travel way and how to bring them into an area and make observations of them not something you're dreaming up or thinking that they're doing but actually pull them out to an area and, and observe what their behavior is because these things don't play checkers they play chess and they don't play to win they play till they win and that's why you have to have an out when you're doing this and really last night you know if that was them that came back one thing he told me that always sticks with me, it's like, I mean, there's a lot that stick with me, but I always bring it back up, all, always. Just because you're finished with the mission. Yeah, doesn't mean they are. They'll chase you down. It's because you're, you're done and you're, mm -hmm. you're tired and you've been squatching all day. They're not done. Yeah, yeah, they'll come in. They're not done. They'll come in and, and the a two knock, the two knocks they were doing, they did a two knock right here, loud, and they did a two knock out there, loud, and that is an inv is it, it's an invitation. I'm glad it wasn't three knocks. Now the the two knocks that was done to me previously was an invitation to come into my camp, and I did not allow that. This invitation, I got a distinct feeling, and this is again my own thinking. Theory, yeah. All right, I had two knocks close, and I had two knocks way out there. The only way I can perceive that is that I have an invitation to come out. Yeah. And uh, and then now you've got another point, 
and then your next I'm work mode of action mm -hmm. would be to go with that yeah. and try that out based yeah. off of that. Yeah, that's a that's the last point of information I have yeah. is an invi invitation out and it was towards the direction of that creek where I was at. And like he said, he's like, man, what if we had another night? Yeah. We, we would probably go back to sites one and two where everything was great and have another knock session mm -hmm. and see what happens after these two invites. Yeah, uh, but so. it, 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 it really helped me out though that they came and did two knocks or we got two knocks. Uh, it's, it's hard to not put your own perception on it, but knowing these up here and knowing that in the, in, you know, 10 to 12 mile radius of their home range, only finding their tracks, I can, I can only, perceive that it was them doing the knocks last night at camp uh, it really helped me because I got a three knock in an area from a female that I'd spent years knocking with and to me she told me to get out so and I don't know if there's something in the area I'm not supposed to see maybe the little one she's it, it protecting could be. something maybe and, and if you remember little Sam got shot at so any one of these variables could be reason why I got a three knock and told to get out. What year was that that he got last shot year. at? That was last year. Mm -hmm. That was November 2018 when he got shot at. And so I was. What does that do to them? Yeah, I, I mean, was, if you got shot at in the woods, what the hell would you do? Yeah. So I was pretty distraught last night after they they wouldn't answer the knock, but then I did get a knock on a wolf. You know, I was pretty distraught over that, that you know, is my study group, group ruined with my presence there. But with the two knocks here and the two knocks that were further away. And the whoop. And, and the whoop. Uh, and, and, and when I get whooped at it, it's little Sam. Little Sam whoops at me. Sasha don't. Uh, to me, it was a, hey, you know, uh, it was a, they've reached out to me now. And I've been trying to figure out how to repair a relationship with little Sam after he got shot at. And I think the, you know, my perception of their invite is exciting to me now. Because that's, the, that's another little point on this blank piece of paper. Right. In the dark, I've been groping at for years, trying to understand and study. That's the last little point, I got an invite. So the next time I come out here, I won't be so apprehensive. I'll be able to, I might be able to come out here and knock and just and be able to have them come in. So right. I'm excited about that. Well, we've been yapping for too long. If you're still with us here on YouTube, <laughs> we want to own segment. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we thank you all for watching uh, and spending spending time with Bigfoot Explorer on this uh, North Louisiana Sasquatch mission number one. Uh, we plan to do more. Uh, so thank you, brother, for. Uh, Oh, yeah. For coming out here and doing this with me. I appreciate it. You run me in the ground this weekend. No, he ran <laughs> me in the ground this weekend. 18 to 20 hour days in the heat. That's tough. I tell you, the only time that I was really messed up is when I ate that double cheeseburger. And then we were going back out to a spot and that AC was hitting me in that truck. And this one's going, yeah, man, if we go here, we'll go back here and we'll run that spot and all that. And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I, Whoo, it was rough. That double cheeseburger nailed me. I got to apologize, Bigfoot Explorer. We did not get the encounter video at the, of the pond that I set out to do. Yeah. We were so busy, uh, we just didn't get to it. Uh, but what y'all did get instead, because we were there, uh, Patrick Chronicles Part 1. His first encounter with Sasha, the fe the red female Sasquatch, we literally documented from start to finish where it all actually happened. So that's going to be in this video. It's going to be a long video, a long video. Um, so he actually got to a point where uh, he felt uncomfortable. He, he had some anxiety. And of course, I turn on the camera and film it. But uh, yeah, I'm having a eye attack holding onto a tree, and I hear the camera go, <laughs> and then start shining on me. 
Hey. I'm like, let's get it on film, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, you can see the wheels turning of this recreation in his head. I mean, it was right where I did the half step at. Yeah, going up that gorge and I, and that I, I saw call the gorge. Yeah, I saw it. That's where I had anxiety attack. At. All right, fans. Thank you so much. Uh, it's back home. It's Monday, September second, Labor Day. Now I got a a whopping five to six hour drive back. This one's got an hour drive back, and we've got to break down camp. My AC and couch is calling. I'm gonna take a picture of my bed and send it to you tonight and the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.